And once again, that was our CBS special report this morning. We'll have more on that later. According to projections being used by the Trump administration, we could be dealing with the implications of coronavirus for months to come. According to the model, we'll see our peaks of fatalities on April 25th with nine deaths a day. It projects death totals in Montana to reach 270 by June before finally leveling out. This data comes from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington. The projections assume strong social distancing measures remain in place to protect against the spread of the virus. At this time, Montana will have enough hospital beds, but is expected to be short of intensive care unit beds. It also expects 100 ventilators will be needed statewide. Again, these projections are just projections that are used by the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Uh, back here in the uh, state, 73 Montana Army Air and Air National Guard men and women have been activated by Montana Governor Steve Bullock. Soldiers and airmen will be in 11 cities, 17 locations, including airports, starting this Friday, April 3rd. And in the mining city, police are preparing to enforce the governor's social distancing orders after receiving reports of house parties and gatherings of more than 10 people. MTN's John Amy tells us what officers will do if people violate that order. Read a book play a game, or just watch television. But Butte Police want people to try and stay indoors. I can't recall another time in my lifetime where people could save a life literally by simply staying home. The governor recently issued a stay-at-home order asking people to only leave home for essential reasons. People are also ordered to maintain social distancing and avoid crowds. You police have recently received reports that some people are ignoring this and police are prepared to cite those violating the order. They have a bar in their house. They're having 10 or 20 people over to drink beer and party. Uh, normally that's not an issue, but it is a huge issue right now because it, it's, it's just not complying with the order and it's dangerous. The sheriff adds that this is not a personal choice issue because if you get the virus, you have potential to spreading it to somebody else. You may be OK, but your neighbor might not be OK after they talk to you if you're infected. Uh, the personnel who are trying to save you at the hospital may not be OK. The first responder that responds to a medical emergency may not be OK. So it's it's selfish and foolish to not comply with this order. In Butte, John Amy. MTN News. And in this new reality where we've moved from in-person gatherings to meetings through a screen. Screens are taking a what really important role during this time um, and staying connected to family and friends is also really important. Services like Zoom, Skype, and FaceTime have been extremely useful. Downloads for apps like Airtime and House Party have also skyrocketed, but be aware, apps are likely connecting some personal information and kids could interact with people you don't want them to. In terms of House Party, I think one thing to be aware of is that friends of friends can join if the room isn't locked. Make sure chat rooms are locked. People have run into issues like Zoom meeting links getting shared publicly. And be sure to keep them private and set up waiting rooms so you have to approve people to join. Also be aware of public sharing of virtual meeting screenshots. Posting anything about a group chat, uh, taking screenshots and posting those things on social media, probably not the best idea. So just keep the chats private. We don't want things shared about us that we don't know are being shared. And experts say if you want to screenshot a virtual meeting or chat, ask permission first and then ask permission to share. Good advice right there. 640 now. Right now, hope is coming in many shapes and sizes with people doing what they can to spread hope in their communities while not spreading the virus. MTN's Cody Boyer shows us another example how flowers are making a difference. To Rochelle Kaufman in Bozeman, hope is a key word, and she's spreading it in the form of wreaths. But not making them herself, she's giving that opportunity to you. This is the perfect time to create. At the flower bar, kindness blooms literally. That's what Rochelle Kaufman hopes for in each bouquet. Since we can't meet in person, I figured let's 
bring the creativity and the workshop to someone at home. Except spending time with flowers might seem like a tough thing to do when we are spending time indoors. Not to Kaufman. It's springtime. We want to see like greenery and flowers. The wreath workshop DIY kit is available for a family to get together and learn different types of flowers. Breathes for families to work on at home or even while talking through a screen, something that Kaufman started with her neighbors in mind. All I want to do is help them by taking their dog out for a walk because they are extremely high risk. I would just want to decorate their front porch with a wreath. Kaufman doesn't stop there. I've always wanted to spread more kindness. So I created this campaign called Kindness Blooms. Nominate someone you find inspirational or kind, whether it's by picking up someone's groceries or finding creative ways to flatten the curve. They could get free flowers at their doorstep. That's hope. Like you know, winter will pass, spring will come. Kaufman challenges you to send as many nominations as you can. For as long as kindness blooms, hope will too. We will get through this. And there is the little bulb at the end of the tunnel. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Another super cool. I, I love, love that. that. Fresh stuff. flowers. Sometimes there's nothing better to brighten your mood. That's a fact. 642. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, right now it's up to the governors uh, to issue stay at home orders, orders in their states. Could the president soon be ordering some stay at home as well? We'll let you know next. And first, here's what's ahead on CBS This Morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, Dr. Anthony Fauci will join us with the latest on the government's battle with coronavirus. And Bill Gates takes us inside his foundation's fight against the disease. Also, protesting nurses speak out on shortages of protective equipment, the risk they say they face. Plus, as we continue to stay at home, we'll tell you what's being done to keep our privacy safe while using those popular video conferencing apps. And in our more perfect union series, meet employees of a shutdown restaurant still providing meals for those in need. There's a lot of us now in need indeed. We'll see you at 7.